Okay, I think we're recording. Uh, we've got a few people in, so let's just open the doors. Hello. Morning, or morning or afternoon. Hello. How are we doing? Okay. So far. No complaints yeah. this morning. Excellent. Excellent. A couple of minutes just in case anybody else wants to pop along and then we'll uh, we'll get started. Mm. Ah. Yeah, it's, um, it's about six o'clock here, so it's the end of Sunday, whereas you're just starting yours, I guess. Right. Well, I've been trying to work out the, um, hang on a second. Sorry about that. I've been working on the, 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 the clear dome for, uh, for Robbie while I've been working. Oh, on really? The okay. Okay. Excellent. The first, first bit, uh, the, the, I print, I printed it like this, but the cable or the cable, the wires and, and, um, filament were catching on the, on the, uh, as it went back and forth. Yeah. So from about here up was shifted a little bit. A little annoying. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay. So what are you, you going to do? Are you going to use a, make a puck out of it and back form it or? Um, I was talking with uh, Derek Gorsh in, uh, in uh, New Orleans uh, on one of the, the drinks and droids and he's going to help me uh, do a little bit of uh, cast, uh, Molding and casting. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that'd be cool. So I've got to create the. Uh, I've got to. I'm going to try to you know, figure out the files and send them to him. He's going to print it up and clean it up and then do all the fun little mold and stuff and then send send me the stuff. And that'd be fantastic. Yeah. So that's, that's the, the that's the current plan. It's that's a head scratcher, wasn't it? That clear dome. <laughs> so. <laughs> You just ignored well, it for a while. The, well, exactly. I, I'm looking in denial. Um, the, the biggest question everybody asked me every time was, so what are you going to do with the dome? I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. And how was everybody else? How, how was the wedding, Rick? Quite nice. Thank you very much, Michael. Did it all, uh, all come together? All go to it plan? It did, indeed. It did. Very mm. happy. So... R2 did his duty quite well, delivered the rings from the end of the gripper right to the uh, to my grandsons who uh, retrieved them from there and brought them to the bride and to the groom. So he did his part. Uh, perfect, brilliant. Good, good. We knew, we knew we'd get there. We had every confidence. There was uh, a few ups and downs on the way, but hey. It goes with the territory. <laughs> it does. It does. Right, we've got a good few people in. We'll, we'll get started. We're recording it anyway. So um, what we're going to cover off today, I'll just go through. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to catch up or whether you were, uh, joined the previous ones. So last time we looked at the uh, Polu Maestro, the interface, how you create the animations actually on the little board and how you save it on the board. So what we want to do this time is just we'll step into the Pad1 code. So it's going to be quite, quite coded um, on this one uh, so that we can see and what we're looking at is how you alter the code so that you can trigger it using, you know, various different buttons within the uh, within the within the controller. Um, and as as before, I mean, just throw questions. Stop me when we're, as we're going through. Or just uh, anything you want to ask, fire away, and we'll uh, we'll work through it together, really. So I've done a little bit of work already on. Um, on I'll just kind of. Show which are oh, probably you've probably seen millions of videos. I've over posted these big time, um, <laughs> only because it's fun. Uh, but yeah, so I've done some work on 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 Chopper already now. So, uh, one of the things I have done is I've mapped this joystick, which which does the head turn. Uh, if you push it up and down, I've mapped it so that it does the tilt servo. So, um, so as well as left and right, I can now I can now wobble ahead, and uh, that's one of the, th the things I've altered. I've also used the t uh, the two rear buttons, these these triggers here, 
um, combination. So you, you press the trigger, hold it down, and then this up, down, left, right button will animate various kind of um, options. So you can see we've got the little um, periscope coming up at the top, or we can bring the arms out. Um, Matter. So that's 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 all triggered just off here. The beauty of the pad one, the beauty of the maestro, as we said last time, was that um, what you what you've got is you've got a, a self-contained script and a microprocessor within the maestro. So all the Arduino has to do is say, "Go and do that," and then it can just ignore it. And in the background, the maestro does all the processing power. And that's really important on the pad one because the pad one is is also the thing that controls this droid when it's rolling around. So the last thing you want is it kind of pausing um, while it's doing an animation and it just continues rolling or whatever. That's, uh, that's, a, that's quite, a, quite a bad thing, really. So uh, let me just share my screen. Let's see if I can share that one, share. So now if you can see this picture at the moment, um, this is directly off Dan, uh, Dan Krause's Pad1360 site. So if you, if you just do a search for Pad1360 on Google, you can grab hold of this. And this is the current buttons are mapped on the controller already for the, R2, for the R2-D2. So, um, and you've got the codes, which is like left one is the left bumper button, left two is the left trigger, right one is your right bumper, right two is your right trigger etc 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 um the combo that i used was using the right two trigger because it, it's not mentioned throughout here so it's a it's a free key it's something that i can just grab so i use the right sorry the right two trigger the right r2 um and i use these these up and down keys um as the as the main sort of trigger if that makes sense and again, I think when you're looking at using anything with, with, with Pad1, or even if you're going to modify the shadow, the first thing you're starting to plan which buttons you want to use for which animation, because there's some in there that are already mapped. And obviously, you can change them. You can go in and customize the whole thing if you want to. Uh, but but you know, you're know you better off probably finding a couple of spare ones just to get, get used to it, first of all, before you start going start too gung-ho. So that makes sense up to now. Yeah. Cool, cool. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop into um, the the actual code and let and I'll take I'll take you through some of the key the key parts of the code. Also, as I go through, I'll share some of the uh, I guess the experiences I had when I was putting this together because there's a few bumps in the road as there always is when you're trying to build these things and uh, play around with this electronic stuff. Um, so obviously this is the Pad1 360 body code, it's the uh, Arduino Mega version, it's on Dan's um, gift hub, um, gift hub on there, so it's, um, it's readily available and all I've really done is modified it and I'll just, I'll just flip through the code. There's, there's some great um, session that I think Steve Bardanes has done on all of this talking through the code in a bit more depth so I'm not going to go through it line by line as in you know where you can tweak and where you can alter things but what it do is just just get a little bit of a feel for it so the Michael, first sorry yeah could you put it could you set it up so that you can actually see the, the line numbers on it the code line numbers um I don't know can you do that I didn't know you could actually do that. Do you know how to do that? <laughs> I don't. I just I, I I printed out the the code a while back to try to play with it myself, and it actually printed the line number. So I was hope I was I need to have for reference. But uh, okay, I've never I've never used line numbers, so I was just kind of looking to see if there's any options on there that uh, I've got go to line. Yeah, Michael, if you go under um, file preferences. Okay. Then there's a display line numbers. Check Got it. Yeah. Okay. Here's the line numbers. Now, as I said, I have edited and added bits of code. So this is this is the chopper code that I put together. So some of the line numbers may have gone out of sync. Sure. Um, but yeah. So if you do need to add the line numbers, you just go into file preferences. 
yeah, you learn something every day. You didn't know that. Okay. Like me. I, and I you learned, thought you were just a teacher today. I learn. I learn by doing, uh, experimenting, playing around, and making a mess of things. I'm, I don't Thank read you. books. If you ever think you've learned all there is to learn, your droid will teach you otherwise. It certainly will. It certainly will. They've got a little mind of their own, haven't they? Um, okay, so there's some stuff at the beginning which you can configure, which which does the drive speed, and Steve Steve covers a lot of this off. I'm using the very latest code, um, and we had a session with Dan who wrote the code, and one of the feedbacks that Steve gave him was it would be good to be able to switch the, the drive stick from the left to the right. Um, so Dan's incorporated in this now, so you can actually choose whether you want a left drive or a right drive, depending what your preference is on the sticks, which is quite nice. Um, the first thing that I've added in here, I've added some extra pieces, and this is kind of what, we, what we're doing here is just setting up some of the numbers, some of the uh, variables that we'll use. Um, I've put a variable in for the dome servo, which is the two limits. So there's a the servo that tips the dome, uh, and then there's an upper and there's a lower limit. Now, in the first instance, I used the servo library to, because the, the dome is actually, the dome tipper is directly connected to the Arduino. It doesn't go through the Maestro. So I use the servo library to control the dome. Now there's an issue with the servo library that conflicts with software serial. So if you run software serial, and it don't get too complicated, but it, it basically has an interrupt conflict and um, what you end up doing is you, you, it ends up uh, kind of jittering all over the place if if you if you run software serial um, and and the servo library. So what I've used, I've just I'm just sending signals directly um, through the PWM, which is which is analog write. So that's why these numbers are a little bit odd. Why they're not they're not like ninety degrees zero one eighty. Uh, these are just PWMs that I've done through a little bit of experimentation more than anything because I've moved away from the, the servo library. But what that is, is it's the upper and lower part of the, the dome when I'm, when I'm actually um, moving around. Um, there's a few other bits and bats. These are all standard within the, um, within the software. And then here is... Somebody said something. This here is where we've, we've included the rest of the libraries. So what I've added, added here is, this you can see there where I added the servo and another one called PWM servo where I was experimenting and found out that they conflicted. So what I've got at the moment is I've got the Polo Maestro library, which is available from Polo's website. I've also included the software serial. And the reason, the reason I've done that is I'm running two Polo Maestros. So I'm on, a fully loaded um, pad one um, on, on um, Arduino Mega, you've got three serial ports and I'm using the third serial port to control the body and then I've run out of serial ports. So what I did is I've used software serial, which is a way of recreating another serial port on, on some other pins on pin 10 and 11. So hence I'm using software serial. So you, you, I believe you can actually um, piggyback and link the two um, Polo Maestros so that you only use them through one serial port, but I, I wanted to keep it fairly simple. So I had two distinct serial ports that I could control. One controls the head, one controls the body. So that includes a library for the um, software serial Polo Maestro. And then this one here just connects the software serial to pin 10s and 11 on a special serial port called My Maestro Serial. So that's what that's what software serial actually does. It creates like a pretend port called Maestro Serial and it will be on pin 10 and 11. And the important one is your transmit pin, the serial is on pin 11. So when you connect to your Maestro, you put it onto pin 11. You can play around with these. Um, and after I've done this, I'll, I'll throw this code somewhere and, and share it so you can have a little bit of a look at it. What you tend to find with when you're starting to do animations is that you, you probably want to build the code yourself rather than just copy somebody else's. And the reason for that is when you're putting uh, servos inside your droid, uh, despite you might get them as much as you can do perfectly center, 
it might be off a little bit. So really what you want to try and do is get the upper and lower limits, um, you know, go through the build process yourself rather than just copying other ones. And the other thing is that the features that you choose and the animations you choose may be different than the ones that everybody else does. So just getting a handle on how you can start to um, trigger and customize a code is really quite handy. But it just involves just playing around with the code a little bit. If it gets overly complex, what the other thing I tend to do is just grab a Arduino Mega or, a, or a, an Uno and just set a very simple circuit up with the Uno and the Maestro and just play with triggering it before I start to get onto the complexity of, um, of the, um, the pad one. So software serial fires up and then I've got these two lines here. Now what these two do is they create, create the object that is the, um, that is the Maestro. So I've got two objects. They're both mini maestros, which are the 12 pins. There's a, there's the six pin is a, is a micro maestro. Um, so it's a mini maestro. I've called the first one maestro, and I've called the second one maestro head. So that's my body, and that's my head. When I tidy the code, I probably will call that one body just to make it a little bit easier, but this is me just playing around, really. So what that's saying is that the... Um, Mini Maestro Maestro is connected to serial three, which is a hardware serial on the uh, on the Arduino Mega. And Mini Maestro, the Maestro head, is collect is connected to the software serial, which the port's called Maestro Serial, which is the one that we created just here. So if you're not familiar with code, this will all this may get all a bit, uh, but we'll just, we'll go through it slowly and it's sort of see how it. See how it sort of makes sense. So what you've got to do is you are creating an object for each maestro that you can then send commands to, and they have to be linked to a serial port because you're making a physical connection with that other piece of hardware. So that's the, that's the main kind of setup, if you like. Um, and then just scrolling through, what we've got is lots of other bits, which is the standard part of the, uh, of the Pad1 software. OK. The next little bit that I've added, it starts on this bit here, which is void setup. And again, the way that Arduino code is structured is you've got uh, a bunch of code that's before setup, which is global code that runs when you first start it up. Then you've got setup that just runs once. Um, and then you've got a loop that continuously runs, which is the main engine of the Arduino, um, the, the Arduino code. So we're moving into the setup. And in here, what we're doing here is we're firing all them serial ports up. So this is now starting to get them live so we can start to talk to things. The serial one and serial two is already used for both the saber tooth, which is the main drive, and the dome. And then serial three um, is the one that we're using for the maestro body. And serial um, maestro serial is, is the virtual serial port that we're using for the head. So all this is all this is really just set up effectively. We've gone through a lot there. Does all that make sense? Or is mind blowing? Or got any questions, thoughts, comments, observations, or bits I've got wrong? No, it's all going well. So, taking Sorry, good notes. You're taking notes. Pen's working, big, taking good notes. So, hmm. I say we'll, we'll record this and. and uh, Code is always the hardest ones to kind of go through because it is there's a lot on it and it's in it uh, you know it's um, we go through it sort of fairly quickly but um, if you kind of grab the code afterwards grab some notes the sessions are on will be recorded so you can uh, you can look them over again certainly cool so um, then we've got some other stuff um, this is where where in, it, these are all part of the setup there's some pins that they're setting up on there. So things like if you've got a fire extinguisher, um, there's the MP3 trigger. This is all part and parcel of the, um, uh, of the actual software. And then what, what we've got here, this is just something that um, I've added again. What I've done is I've added the dome nod. So you can see dome nod. Um, equals right hat y or dome nod equals left hat y and that depends on whether i said to you before um that dan had actually given you the option of switching which control stick you actually use so depending if you're using left stick drive or normal 
um, what it does is it uses that uh, that spare y-axis on the dome. So when I when I said that with with chopper I can move him left and right, and if I move that stick up and down, that's what does the nod. That's called right hat y, which is the reference that you get from um, from the um, library for the Xbox 360 controller. If you're going to use something like um, the shadow or, or some other way of triggering it, they'll be exactly the same. It's just that the buttons might be, be configured or, or noted as something different. So all these ones here are actually referencing the, the controllers that sit on the, uh, sorry, the buttons that sit on the controller. So your left hat and your right hat are the two um, speed controllers and the dome controllers. And then you've got your left three, L3 and R3, which is the Xbox 360 controllers. So they're just telling you which buttons do what. Then it all continues. And that's pretty much the setup. And then what we get into is we get into this, into this loop. Um, and this is the main body of the Pad1 360 code. And as I said, Steve's done a brilliant kind of uh, step through on this code that goes line by line, which I'm, so I'm not going to go through that. But what it's actually doing is it's talking to the Xbox, it's making sure the Xbox receiver, it's making sure it can actually read um, the various buttons and, and controllers that sit on there. Um, <clears throat> and when you're looking at this, what it's, what it's actually doing is it's starting to use these if statements. So anybody who's done a little bit of programming or basics, what if statements are is there to check if something's happening. And if something's happening, it'll run a little bit of code. The way the Arduino if statement works is it, it, it comes up with an if, it has a, uh, a logical check, and if that logical check is true, what it'll do is it'll run the code that's between this symbol and this symbol. So this, this first one is, um, is saying, is the Xbox receiver connected? So can it, is there a physical connection between the Xbox connection? And then when it connects the first time, what it'll do is it'll turn the drive off, it'll turn the turn off, it'll turn the dome motor on, um, and it'll say that it's connected. So, so, so that's what the, the, these kind of if statements go through. So again, a lot of this is part of the pad one. So what I'll do is I'll, I'm gonna just scroll through all of this now, um, and I wanna get into looking at how we trigger off some of the, uh, or, or where we've added the Maestro animations. So I've made a, I made a note on there just to say that this is a Maestro animation section. Again, you, know, you may or may not be familiar with um, Arduino code, but you put two forward slashes at the beginning, and what that does is allow you to put comments and things like that so that you can see what's going on. So what, what I've done is I've, I've, the easiest thing when you're actually trying to add a trigger um, to the Padman 360 is kind of reverse engineer and look at some, one of the other triggers and then just steal the code. That's the quickest way of doing it. That's what I did. So I looked at this one, um, you know, the, these one here, and this is, and it, it, Dan's put all these little notes. So what this, this says is that it's the logic display brightness, the front brightness on, uh, on R2-D2's dome. And if you hold the left button and press up and down, it will increase or decrease the, bar, the darkness. And then he's got this statement that says if xbox dot get button click up comma zero and what does that saying is if the if the up button on the controller is is pressed that's true and then it'll do a second check to say is the L2 but, press button which is the little button at the back of the uh, the controller if that's pressed so that's looking for a combination so where you, where you play computer games and you press two buttons together to do a, a special move or a combination. We're using combinations on this. So up and L2, you press those combinations. If it gets a yes and yes for both of those, what it's actually doing is it's going to send a bit of data to that brightness display to start to increase it, or it's going to send a bit of uh, data to that brightness display to decrease it. And you'll see this throughout the whole code, and all I've done is stolen that. So the bits you've got to know is which button you're going to use, and then, um, what, well, what combinations you're going to use, and then you need to know which script or, or how to actually trigger the things that you're going to trigger. 
So it gets it, it, to be honest, it's, this bit's very simple uh, to the point where it's, where it's probably a little bit boring, but I'll, I'll take you through what's happening here. So what it's doing here is it's checking the Xbox get button press and it's looking for that right, right two button. So it's looking for this trigger at the back here. R2. If that's pressed, it's then saying, is the up button pressed? If I press both of those together, what it's doing then is it's gonna run uh, the script zero that you've already stored on the Maestro. And that's what we kind of did last time. And we'll go into a little bit more of that. The ne next one, what we'll do is we'll start to bring the two together. So we'll grab the, the Maestro um, and we'll grab the Arduino and we'll start to work out how we trigger them. But literally I'm just running, I'm running script zero. Um, so let's just stop share for a second. There we go. Is script zero just one that basically resets everything? No, script zero actually does something. I'll um, I'll right. just show okay. you. So yeah, no worries. Um, what uh, what we've got there is you've got your controller. So I'm trying to hold the camera. The controller is I'm pressing that that button and the up button. Um, and right. that's that, that script zero. Right, so they're all sequences, not sort of a reset to start positions or anything. Not at all, no. What 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 I've tended to do in the what I found in the um, when I've been doing the, the the Maestro programming is with the Maestro you can you can move servos to any position you want, but you can also power down the, the servos. So okay, I can, right. I can leave the servos pretty much in an unpowered state, which you know, so you're not applying a load of stress on servos. It's it's probably the best best thing to do, really. Yep. So um, so if you, I'll just if I do the um, which one is if I do the side the side doors um, now that come out, the first thing it actually does is power all those servos up inside. Like by default, those arms are. Um, it goes in, and then there's a little bit of a noise. I don't need to hear it at the end, and that's then just powering the servos off. So inside, right. it's relaxing a little bit. Um, yeah. And what, what's actually happening is the the arm um, is actually just hitting that side door, which is that little bit of a noise. And that's because I've, I've got magnets on one side to put some magnets in to hold it, and I've just not done the other one. So I've, I did it for the design, but mine's always a bit, um, bit of a beta <laughs> version all the time. <laughs> yeah. So on yeah. the way the Maestro works is you you basically if you saw it last time you create the scripts the individual scripts that run um, piece by piece by piece and then those scripts are basically they're basically just a number zero one two three four five etc. I've just got a naked child join me. Apologies. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is bath ready? <laughs> okay. Uh, do you ever do um, like with an arm like that something like a leave me alone box where you have a a limit switch where when it comes in that it kills the power so that you you activate it and then it comes out and it does its thing and when it comes back in it hits a limit switch that that shuts things down. You, you can do. I've done that in code on this one. So Im immediately it gets to its home position. It then shuts the power off anyway. Um, the maestros will will actually act as input. So you could put switches up there, and you can actually receive. You can um, read read the, the switches back and do that through the switch. Um, on just the for switch. if you can do it with the code, then why bother with the switches? That answered my question. So yeah, the, the only the only drawback with code is the code code's blind and deaf, so it doesn't actually know that the arm has gone back in. So if you know if a kid grabs hold of it or it gets jammed or whatever, it's still just going to go. Oh, just wait five seconds and right, we'll switch everything off. You know, whereas your switch actually tells you physically that something's happening. Good point. Good point. So, it's, so it is quite it is quite useful, but I've not I've not gone that far. I've just used used good timing on there. Um, but what I've done is when it fires up, it basically all the servos that aren't in use, they're powered off. And then it's literally at the point of animation, the first thing they do is power up and make sure they're in the home position tight. And then they go through the animation, they go back to the home position, and then they power off again. Cool. Um, I think we, Steve's just joined as well, hopefully. Hello. Hi, Steve, how are you doing? 
I'm all right, Michael. Those new glasses you're sporting? They are. Do you know, I've had my eyes tested the first time in 10 years. Um, and uh, <laughs> yes, it's brilliant. I was at Verifocals and what you, you have to... You t tend to your head goes further back and further back until actually yeah. you can't focus on anything. Whereas now <laughs> go forward again, so uh, it's yeah. massive upgrade. I've not used my little uh, headset upgrade. with the, with the glasses with the the magnifying headsets and all these glasses. So yeah, it's been pretty good actually. Yeah, I got a set of those uh, the, the white uh, magnifying ones. Um, they finally arrived from China the other day. The only thing is, I find them quite heavy because they've got batteries as well for the LED light in the front. Yeah. So they do tend to kind of pinch on the top of your nose a bit. Yeah, they do. They do. Again, they rest, they rest on top of my glasses, so they're not quite, they're not as bad, but yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, sorry, Steve, yeah, we're just, we're just, we're just <laughs> delving into, we've gone the first bit and we're just talking about how to trigger things within the... Was, um, was, it, was it a half six start or a six o'clock start? It was a six o'clock start. I, I thought it was a half six start. <laughs> sorry, mate. No, it's a... Oh my God, I'm so sorry, everyone. Crikey, I would have been here ages ago. I've, I've been sitting around waiting for it to start. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. No, it was a... Oh, that's my that's my fault. Totally my fault. It's just because I, I think I saw one of your posts at five o'clock saying we're online in an hour and a half, in 90 minutes. Yeah, no, it, was, it doesn't matter. We, we, we anyway, just, um... I, I do apologize. In that case, I apologize, everyone. Sorry. We were chatting to Rick to make sure his wedding went well. Um, and then we were chatting to Scott on his, um, on his new dome for his... Um, for his build, so we just we were talking a little cool. bit beforehand, anyway. So. Well, in that case, I humbly apologise, and <laughs> hopefully, I'll be able to uh, make my my tardiness worthwhile in some regard, anyway. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things I was talking about, Steve, was the was the uh, serial connections. So when yep, interesting when when I because um, I think you said that you used software serial on this. Um, and what, what I did is I used a, I used the servo library to do the head nod because I used the servo as a direct connection to the Arduino Mega and then I used software serial yep. for the Maestro. But the software serial and, ser and servo library actually conflict. I don't know if you've come across that before. So it, it creates jitter on the, on the servo. It's kind of well documented. It's due to interrupts, I think. Uh, okay, okay. It's not something personally I've come across because I just haven't built something that does require both if you see what i mean yeah actually yeah. having said that it does explain some some behavior i have seen which actually worked worked in our favor funny enough we wanted a jittery servo for something and it just happened to be jittering and i couldn't figure out why so that's probably explained it yeah it's just, it's when you use a software um serial in the servo so what, I, what i've ended up using for the body is just using a direct analog right to the pwm um, and just getting the values okay. right, which controls it, and it keeps it nice and nice and solid. It's just one to one to watch out, really. Can you elaborate on that a little? Because I have some other projects that have been have had jittery servos. Yeah, so there's a, there's a library um, in the Arduino called uh, Software Serial. Um, as we said at the beginning, and what it does is it creates a virtual serial port on a pin, um, and when you load that up and you load the servo library, so there's two libraries that are used that conflict, and the servo library is uh, is what you use normally to control servos. The two the two actually conflict. It's due to something called interrupts, um, and what happens is as soon as you fire up the software serial and it starts to talk, it actually starts to jitter the servo. So the servo just goes all over the place. It's not like um, it's not normal servo jitter where it gets to a position it just you know it jitters a little bit. This is literally it's kind of its head was going going mad really. Um, so I, I I stopped using software serial and it, it reverted back. I was trying to yeah, find it. Sorry, Stephen. Yeah, no, I was just going to jump in a little bit there and just point out to people that what you uh, should realise is obviously the difference here between an Arduino Uno and Arduino Mega. So Michael, it looks like is using a Mega from what I can see in the bottom right hand corner of his sketch uh, of, of his, uh, yeah, of his sketch. Um, but I know a lot of people use Uno for uh, Padawan, for example. So yeah, this, this is something because uh, on the Mega, you have a lot more hardware serial ports. Uh, whereas on the Uno, you've got one and that's it. And then everything else has to be software serial. 
So sorry, Michael, just wanted to sort of point that out to people. If you're, if you're, if you haven't built one of these systems yet and you're dithering between going for a mega version or a Uno version, and this could potentially become something you want to do, which, you know, as in run a servo directly, as well as run a maestro, then maybe that, you know, you might be better off with a mega. Um, but if you're just going to be doing stuff using the maestro, then software serial um, through an Uno, um, I, th I think it's absolutely fine. I haven't had any issues with it, but your mileage yeah. may vary. It works really well. Um, I mean, I would, I, for the cost difference, I'd recommend using a, a Mega every time for uh, certainly for running R2s and choppers and whatever because of the size of them. And you've just got a lot more, um, I guess, expandability on them. And most importantly, you've got all of those hardware serials and hardware, hardware serials work better anyway, really. They, they can be tweaked to go a little bit faster and um, this is, also solid. Here's my current project. I'm doing the 31.9er. Uh, er Yeah. So I'm going to try everything out on that before I try to make it uh, work on the, before I start designing and building for the bigger one. And that's the best thing to do, to be honest, to get, just get a bit of hardware or get a smaller droid to play with. Um, play with Maestro and see how the, how the two sort of uh, communicate. A lot of these, it's interesting, once you, once you get under the under the skin of how Dan's written the Padawan, it's, it's, it's not too complex and you can start to use the Xbox controller to control any, any kind of droid as an input device with the, uh, with the controllers. Um, so you, as I said at the beginning, you know, you just start by adding a couple of things, but you can get to the point where you end up rewriting it a new controller using these um, using these libraries. So you, you mentioned. Uh, I'm sorry to keep no, interrupting, no, but you mentioned the uh, the dome nod. What is the? Can you elaborate on that? Yeah. So the the actual well, um, obviously the the dome nod action is the where the the do, the dome nod goes sides up and down like that. Oh wow! Yeah, I don't have mine set up to do that. <laughs> that that looks fun. Not many do. <laughs> yeah. So, so there's a there's a there's a, the, the whole lazy Susan on top is is on um on two bearings. Yeah, well. oh, so okay. it can it can move left and right, and if you if you rattle it, it can rattle around a bit. Wow. <laughs> so, but that that runs off um. I don't know if you can see the controller, but that runs off this this stick here. So this left to right turns the dome up and down, makes it makes it nod. So what I've done is I've, I've captured the up and down value, and then actually made that to control the servo. And I'll show you again as we step through the code where I've done that. Uh, yeah, I saw where you were doing it, but thanks for elaborating. No, that's fine. And again, you know, just fire questions in these. They're a lot better if we're if we're kind of talking way through through things and uh, and throwing throwing thoughts and ideas in. So what what I've got here is literally it's looking at the button press. Uh, as I said before, it's combos, so it checks to see if the right trigger button is pressed. If it's pressed, it then checks up, and then that's a combo, and it'll run sketch zero. If it's right two and down, it'll run sketch three. If it's right to and left, it'll run sketch one. And if it's right to and right, it'll run sketch two. So what I've got on the um, on the actual um, chopper is I've got is I've got four different animations, which I'll kind of show you what what those are. So these are all these are all body animations. So the um, trying to hold the camera and press buttons at the same time. Uh, it's, a good, it's a fun hobby that one. It is, but anyway, so the right button and up, the first animation is all the doors, the two side doors, if you can see, um, actually open. In fact, let me stop sharing. I'll, uh, I'll just uh, spotlight that, I think. Is that spotlighted already? Yes, yeah. It is. yeah, we can see it. Okay, so you can see it quite clearly. Yeah, so the, the right button and up is, is animation one. So all the... Um, all the Arduino is actually doing is literally just sending a little trigger to the maestro and saying, just run animation one. And then it's getting on back on with its code. In the background, 
the maestro is then moving all of those servos out, slowing them down, using all of the acceleration to do that animation. If I, uh, if I do um, the button and down, what that does then is it does a bit of a wave. So it kind of starts on one side, then the arm goes, then the door goes, then the arm goes, then the door goes. So that's just another animation. If I press it and go left, that just pushes the arm out, holds it out for about four seconds or so, then the arm goes back in. That's another animation. And if I press and hold it and do the right one, that then just does a quick flash of the doors. So, and again, as you saw in the, um, the Maestro session, you can pretty much build all of the animations that you want to. Now, the other animation, the other ones that you'll see when we move on to co code, is then the um, the other side, which is the left trigger button. So what I'm what I'm pressing now is is this button here. So rather than the right trigger, and I use that that trigger then for the head. So that's where you just need a little bit of thought and say, you know, how are you going to do that? So if I press the left trigger and up. What I get now is I get the arms that come out and do the um, asynchronous flex, as I like to call it. That's a cool, cool term. Um, and if I press the same button and press it down, um, what it does is it should do the synchronous flex, which is the same animation, but then with the, the side by side together. And then if I press the same button and left, I get another animation. So each of the maestros have got four animations in there. Um, so that's just got the periscope animation on. Incidentally, the, on the periscope animation, the light that's on there is also controlled by the maestro. So what I've done is I've connected that LED to the output of the maestro. So when it's inside like now, now that light's not on. So first thing it does is turn the light on before it pops it out. So again, you can control LEDs from the Maestro as much as you can control servos. And then the last um, last animation, which again is that um, right button and left is just a sing single arm. So the uh, the Italian two fingers or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, and so, and that's, that's the animations, but in every single one of them, all the, um, pad one is actually doing is chucking out um, a single command, so it's not you're not using a lot of processing power. So, so your dome wobble at the moment that's got nothing to do with the maestro, that's just that's in the main. That's correct, and I'll, I'll yeah. show you the, the dome wobbles at the bottom. So, I'll show you what I've done with the dome wobble, right? The dome, the dome itself, just running sequences, yeah. The yeah. dome itself is connected to uh, to one of the pins on the Arduino Mega. And it's just literally right. outputting a signal to say, right, move the servo. Yeah, just run it. Yeah, yeah. You, you, I could, I could very easily run the dome wobble um, through the maestro if I wanted to. The reason I haven't done is what each of the maestros run a single script at once. So yeah. what I can't do is I can't, I can't um, do any wobble it while he's doing his arms and yeah, yeah. So yeah. What I thought is is that's why I've used two maestros and kept the servo separate because it means I can I can actually do a, a dome wobble when his arms are coming out and going back in. I'm not interrupting the scripts at all by doing that. So with with you having you two maestros, can you trigger something in the in the head and the body? Yes. Right. And so, you can do the wobble if you really yes. wanted to because it's separate again. So it's party time. Nice. Yeah, so you can you can run you can run them simultaneously. What yeah. you can do is I can't do two animations in the head at once. Yeah. Now, now the way the way I've got the code set up at the moment, I'm using this command called restart script. And I said we'll we'll dig into the maestros probably on the next session a little bit more. But what restart script does is it basically starts that script from scratch and it kicks the script off and it yeah. runs through. What it doesn't do in this code is it doesn't check to see if a script is already running. Now, what, uh, okay. I, what I will do when I get a little bit further into this, I'm going to say that if a script is running, it's not going to allow you to do the action. Because in, in theory, yeah. at the moment, I can get myself into a bit of a pickle. So I can so do, do a loop where it just goes, am I, am I in the middle of something? If so, leave yeah. it alone. Yeah. Okay. So, so as it stands at the moment, I could, I could start off a flex 
I yeah. Could, I could then get the periscope to come up halfway through and the, the arms would just stop wherever they are. It would just fail, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, so it's you behaving rather than the code. It's me, yeah, there's no... And to be honest, on the on the body, because there's nothing... There's no sequence of events where they're independently opening and things are coming out. It doesn't really matter because they, they're literally yeah. just doors opening and things. But on and the if, head, have you got any? Have you got any sequences that are on a loop that would just continue? So you, in the end, you might want to interrupt them, get them to finish. No, I've not. I've not run any any sequences like that. They've all got a start, a middle, and end. Right, but that, when, you, when you were looking at Maestro, was that one of the things where you could actually just get it to run and it would loop and loop and loop and loop? Sorry, Steve. So you said something. No, sorry, no. Paul, Paul was talking. It's fine. Just carry on. Paul. All right. Yeah, I was just wondering if you if you programmed into the Maestro that you just wanted it to to run again and again and again and just constantly repeat, then you definitely need that code you talked about, that next next layer of coding yeah. to actually physically interrupt it or to deliberately not interrupt it. Well, it won't interrupt I've, it. I've approached it in a slightly different way. Go ahead. So, right. So what I've done is if I've got something that's on a, on a loop or it puts the servos into a fixed position. So for example, I've got my Pi panels that on a maestro command will all open and they will stay open. Yeah. And then I've got yeah. a separate maestro command that resets them back again. So in that case, right. what, you could, what you could do is you could have a button assigned to say up and then a button assigned to say close. Yeah. But if you, but what, as, as Mike, what Michael's saying is that um, I mean, and so effectively that up is kind of like it's an open loop if you like because it's it's putting them into a position it's not putting them up and then closing them after a, a time period which you can also you know obviously you could build an animation to do that but yeah but what I've got is I've got two separate commands one that does one action and one that does another action I call it yeah, the, so uh, the I call it I call it the Rick that... wave right <laughs> and then it's down to you to it's, it's, it's execute Rick one working. and execute Rick two yeah Okay, and again, you're you're doing that because you know what things you can make happen while the doors are all open safely, and um, when they're all shut safely. Well, it was, it was more just to actually have control. So you know, if if I um, wanted to sort of you know sort of like almost have like a surprise sound. So uh, the other thing as yeah. well, I, I, Michael, apologies again for being late and maybe missing this, but what I've built into my um, Arduino Uno sketch where Michael where you're looking at now on Michael's screen where it says if button this and that button yeah. then hit this hit this maestro script what I've got in mind is I've got an extra line in there that fires a sound so I trigger a sound event with these things okay. so say for example mine goes Wah! and then they will stay open until I close them right and that then and that, that's where I think when you start to understand how the individual components were you can start to pull them together um i've not mm. i've not i've not uh, i've intentionally not made these overly complex so you can see how they work but yeah where, yeah just get where, basics yeah. where steve was talking about there where you've got uh, domes that open and they stay in an open position and then they close you can have a variable in there that says dome open you know dome open equals zero dome open equals one so you can flip that variable so that the code actually knows whether the doors are open or not. Um, and yeah. then it can, yeah. it can do the opposite. So there's lots yeah, of so you, you can do that as a toggle, that. almost as a toggle switch then, Michael, couldn't you? Yeah, so you know, so the same, but the same button either opens it or closes it depending on what state it's currently in. So it yeah. checks the state. Effectively, what it's doing is you're setting the state of where it last ran through that loop. Yeah, and I guess it's your safety net as well because then you can get it to check is it open if you're telling it to do something that could cause it to damage itself or... or yeah, if you had rubbish. something sticking out of an open door. of that right yeah. in the Maestro okay. as well. Yeah. If you're not using Padawan or if you're not using an Arduino, you can do everything you've been discussing right into the Maestro code as well to have it, you know, wait for certain things. And it'll, you can actually set it so that when it goes to a certain sequence, and is running that sequence, it ignores everything else until that sequence is complete so that you can't give it complete. Right, okay. And yeah. so on. Okay. So the animation then, protects itself. Right. Yeah. And then once it completes that sequence at the bottom of the sequence, you use a go to to go back to the original loop, which is listening for all of the various inputs, whether they're coming from an Arduino or whether they're coming from uh, some other type of input such as in my case, without Arduinos and without Padawan, I'm actually doing it by using toggle switches on a 
uh, tend Relay, to remote, and six of those toggles are actually uh, making things happen in Maestros. Mm. Right. That, that's why. That's that's where I think once you get the basics on how it works, you can start to layer up the complexity. Right. Um, and it's it's you know and I mean I find it useful sometimes to actually sketch out the logic. You know, just get a bit of paper and just say. I want to do this, and this will move it to this state, and it, you know, because I'm terrible. What I'll do is I'll I'll put the hardware in, I'll jump into the code, and I'll start right. How can I make it do this? And so with very little planning, um, just 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 get in there, roll my sleeves up. Um, but actually, if you if you plan the order of sequences, plan the states that their animations might be in, what you almost do is start to build the code through actually doing that. But to actually even start on that, you need to understand the fundamental building blocks, which is kind of what we're going through here. Um, but as Steve said, you know, first thing you do is you've just got check for a double button press, and then I'm kicking off a script. It's very, very easy to have another line under there that then triggers a sound. So then you've suddenly yeah. got, you know, da-da, and his arms come out and starts flexing, or you can have yeah. whatever annoying chopper noise that you want to, that, that coincide with the... Uh, uh, the, the various animations, so it is incredibly powerful. Mm. Um, so just just going through what we saw before. So the the this is just checking the art up, down, left, right, and you saw the different scripts. And it's literally just chucking across one, two, three, uh, zero, one, two, three to kick those scripts off. And then if I scroll down for the next sections, which are the left buttons, uh, so these are the this that was the the body animation. Um, and this was a head animation. And you can tell that because the R2, which is the uh, the right trigger, um, I move it to L2, which is the left trigger. Well, the biggest thing you can see is that the object, the maestro that I'm calling, changes from maestro to maestro head. So it's, it's talking to that other maestro that, that's, that's on there and doing exactly the same, which is restart script. Now, what, what what I would probably add in one of these is something something that says, you know, if um, check the maestro um, maestro script is running, and this isn't the code, by the way, but but, <laughs> but what, what, what I'd have is I'd have something on there that says, is there a script already running? And if that yeah. script is running, then don't bother, you know, because you'll end up buggering something up. So I can then start to add some check-ins. And the, the, the yeah. Maestro library is very, very simple, to be honest. There's not, there's not a lot of complexity to it. But what you can do is you can, you can check into the, into the Maestro library, you can get all sorts of feedback. So you can find out where the servo actually is in space. It tells you which, you can ask where, where each servo is. You can see if it's got scripts running. There's all sorts of things that you can get back from the Maestro. Um, now the important thing for this, and this this had me a little bit stumped, embarrassingly when I was uh, when I was playing around with it, so I couldn't get the damn thing to work on the feedback. It just kept hanging. Is to get the feedback, you've got to have the receive and the transmit connected. Um, whereas to play the animations, you just have to have transmit because all you're doing is sending code to the maestro, yeah. and it will carry out that code. What I'd stupidly done is I'd, I'd, in my usual rush job to get things up and running and working, and may go, hey, look, it's waving at me. Um, I'd not connected the receive cable, and then I started to want to read things back from the maestro, and it wasn't playing ball, and it, I was confused like hell, and then realized I only got one bloody wire actually going to the damn thing. Um, so you've got your transmit and receive wire connected, and then you can interrogate and you can get information back. So where how are you? Would, where are you displaying you your? Uh, sorry, go ahead. How would you add a sound to that? What would what would be the command line? Um, again, what what I would do is I'd, I'd scroll down um, and I'd nick nick one of the lines one, yeah. there. So <laughs> yeah, I've got it up on my screen, Michael. If you want to if you want to flip to me, um, I've yeah, actually sure. got that already in. Um, uh, okay, stop Show share. Think, think you I can mean, share, it, can yeah. you Good old cut and paste. How do I share my screen? Here we go. Share screen at the bottom. Yep. Right. Hopefully, you guys are seeing. Yeah. There we go. Seeing that. So yeah, if I just uh, scroll down. Do be do. Uh, 
I was playing with this just before, so. Uh, da, 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 da. Realize I'm gonna have to add sounds now to all my animations, Steve, because this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, where, oh, actually, I, no, I know what I did. I actually took it out. But yeah, I had a problem uploading to my Uno, just purely a hardware thing, because it's all bolted down to a board. I couldn't actually access the port, stupidly enough. So I up uploaded a set of code, and then I thought, oh, I need to add the sound events into that. Put all the sound events in, and then realized I would already bolted it back down again. So I actually um, I actually did a control Z and undid them. But sorry, sorry, Michael, I, I totally pissed on your cornflakes there but basically yeah you just literally put in um the uh, the spark fun one of the trigger um, yeah. trigger events, so, you make, that sounds now. so you can basically just you know <laughs> copy that and um and just yeah. stick it in do, 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 there we go yeah so you, you Boom. You don't you don't write code you 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 only ever steal the people's code when you're uh, when you do Arduino Plagiarize. Plagiarize completely. Oro. Yeah. Oro. But yeah, so the, <laughs> when you start to go through it, the, you, the, the commands jump out at you. So MP3 trigger play and then the, which track you're actually playing. So you can, you know, you can just go through and, uh, and steal the code and, and add them in. Okay, Steve. Yeah, so sorry. Out. I can stop sharing now. There we go. Cool. Back nice. to you. I'll share back onto the code. Share. There we go. Yep. So as I said, yeah, you can steal MP3, MP3 trigger and play. Um, and I think, you know, as I said, if you have a look through Steve's video, you'll see got to order the uh, MP3 uh, files in a certain order. And play is always the number of the file that you're actually playing. So it's quite easy to work out which sound effect that you want to link through them. So effectively, all I've got is is that line of code there, which is what manages all of my animations currently uh, for the uh, for the head and for the body. Now, the other thing that I was going to quickly go through was to look at that head nod command because that's another thing. Um, it's a little bit different than the uh, just just triggering a maestro because what we're actually doing is is moving a uh, moving a stick. Um, and I put it in with the, the dome drive. So right at the end of the Padlon 360 is the dome drive. And again, never write code, always steal somebody else's. Um, what Dan had written is this code here, which was the dome throttle. So moving the room left and right um, equals. Now there's a few commands in here, which are all nested, but what is what the one command called map, which I use all the time, and what map does is it takes a value, an input value, um, and it, it can remap it. So if you've got something that's between 1,000 and 2,000, but actually you want it to be between 0 and 256, you can map exactly where it is. So what you can do is say that at the midpoint of 1,000 to 2,000 is 1,500. And if I map that to 0 to 256, it would then return 1 to 8 if that makes sense. So the map command is quite useful for translating between between two sets of numbers. And so what, what Dan's done is he said the dome throttle, so how fast the dome is moving left or right, is reading the get analog hat dome axis. So that's the, in other words, which of the which of these keys here, which of these analog joysticks should I read? Um, and that will return a number between minus 32,768 and plus 32,767. And then he's remapping it to his dome speed, which I think is between minus 127 and 127. And all I've really done is I've done exactly the same on the dome wobble, except I'm using the, um, the Y axis rather than the X axis to wobble the head. It gives me the same set of range. And I'm using those things that we set at the beginning, which is dome high and, and dome low. So as you start to move the little um, stick up and down, it will return a number between those two numbers that we set right at the beginning. And then literally... That was the 160 and 240. Was that what the, the ones back at the beginning? That, that's the one, yeah. 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 Yes, okay. Yeah, right right at the back of the code. And that, that um, normally, if you're using a... 
servo library, that's a bit more logical. So with servos, you've got zero to 180 degrees and you just say move to degree 90. Um, or you do it in, in uh, milliseconds, which is 1,500 is the middle for a typical servo. And it goes between 1,000 and 2,000. I'm not using that servo library because I've got the conflict. So I'm literally putting a random, well, I'm, I'm just sending a direct number out to pin 12. Uh, using analog write. So I did that really just by trial and error to, to, to see which numbers high and low work best. So what this what the analog write does is it sends that signal out to pin 12, which then moves the servo to that value of dome wobble, which is the one that it's read on there. If that and so does your dome um, actually recenter to level or does it sit slightly off in certain positions or? It really reset my dome reset. Um, do you mean spinning or nodding? Nodding. Nodding. No, yeah, it resets to center because the um, the the, uh, the Xbox 360 controls automatically drop to center anyway because the sprung loaded. Yeah. So uh, if I push it up, it goes to to that way. If I push it down, it goes that way. If I wobble it up and down, it goes that. Way. If you just let go, it'll then go back to being perfectly flat. So that, that's where I just tweak those codes so that I could get the um, get the dome to center level. If that makes sense. And it's left right, not front back. It left left right spins the dome. Front back does the um, does. The, but it tilts left right, not forward back. It, yes. Uh, sorry. Yeah. 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 So it tilts. It tilts uh, left and right like that. So it, cool. can't, it can't tilt forwards and backwards. Um, yeah, it can do. All you do is you just cheat, cheat, cheat. So you look, so you go this way, so like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the analog response, Mike. It's just hey, strategic right. response. There you go, he's nodding, see? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've just, I've just done it on one axis. Um, I didn't do it on two. To be honest, I mean, there's, uh, there's, if you, if you kind of do the, um, the, if you do the, the movement as well as the, the head, he wobbles all over the place, so you can get a lot of, uh, a lot of animation. And moving, moving him to one side, I mean, in nodding equally, it's, uh, it's quite good. I really didn't want to go down the route of a full. Th full sort of 360 dome movement. That's a little bit overly complex for what uh, what you needed, I think. <laughs> well, obviously, I can see you disappointed. So, gauntlet set, challenge set. We'll see what happens. <laughs> a new, a new gimbal that's <laughs> got to be on there now. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and, and really, I think that's, that's the... That's the triggering of the code. Um, if you're using something like Shadow, and I've got to say, I've not, I've not used Shadow very much, but I imagine it's just working out how that triggers the same buttons um, or the, the different keys on the Shadow, but you still use the control exactly the same. Have you done any Shadow stuff, Steve? I've not touched it. No, okay. Uh, shadow is the Sony controller, the little single hand like Wii controller yeah, that I have. But it's still Arduino. It's still Arduino that, that you talk to, isn't it? Just yeah, like that's the one. Just a different input. So it's still Arduino. So the code will still react in the same way, if you see what I mean. So you can still cut and paste a lot of this code straight into, into it. But the point Michael was making is that uh, we know through the Padawan code which button does which. It's, it's, ve it's plain English. Um, you know, it's, it's very, very simple. It says, you know, if the R2 trigger is held down and you push up on the d-pad you know it's it's plain english plain language nice and easy to sort of to sort out shadow uh i just personally haven't got any experience it could be just as simple i just don't know have you played with it eric uh i haven't played with it yet i've i've got the controllers okay. um so that's why i'm i'm building uh the 31.9 is to or 39.1 is to get something to play with yeah, cool. quickly yeah, I think something that's not likely to run a child over or do damage if you run a child over. Oh, I wasn't even thinking about that. No, I was just thinking something I can get up and running faster. Ah, uh, no, you just want to wait till you get the flamethrowers and the, uh, the cattle prods involved. I, I did put a, a candy drop in the bottom, the the tack drop door. So <laughs> banana drop. The banana, yeah, yes. Yeah, Tim Barry who designed them. 
came to one of the races and he dropped four bananas on the uh, on the track, which caused absolute havoc, chaos, tweets. <laughs> and, uh, Can just... you actually get a, a banana out of that? Is there enough clearance? No, the the sweets that we call them foam bananas. They're little uh, little sort of sweet treats about the size of your finger. Ah, perfect. Yeah. Like like, like foam, candies, foam candies candy. for Americans. Sorry, a bit like marshmallow type stuff. Um, right, right, like the like the circus peanut things, but yeah. banana. Yeah, and ma marshmallow and um, and thirty nine percent tracks go really well together, as you can imagine. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I need to yeah, get a. He, he, uh, he wasn't thanked for that. I need to put together a trade with somebody and find something I've got over here that I can trade for bananas because my kids would love that. They love you know, Phone green bananas. green green tea uh, Kit Kats and things they can't get at home. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've had um, I've had green tea Kit Kats quite nice. So is there a list of specific, uh, like, you know, the get analog hat or the get, you know, the, the get button press, um, can, yeah. can you, is there a list of things that uh, the Xbox trigger reads? Is that besides the, I mean, I remember um, in playing, playing some games, you, you could double punch a button or, and it, depending on, and, and you'd get a certain effect, whether, as opposed to single punching a button or things like that. Is there... Is it just reading the library, trying to go into the library? You, you can do. Now, um, I'll chuck over to Steve in this. So what I was looking for here is that the vast majority of libraries that you load actually come with examples. Keep, so keep going down, Michael, to Xbox Rec V. To? Should be Xbox Rec V, is it not there? I've not got it on my example on here. Have you got it on yours? Uh, let me just break back to the USB host shield. I've got the USB host shield. Oh, yeah, Xbox. Yeah, go go up, up to the number second one, I think, to 2.20. USB host shield 2.0. That one? No, yeah. next one down. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, maybe that one. Yeah, I had Xbox as well. And you should have Rec V there, middle one. Uh, oh, that one. There you go. Right. So I'll just open this. Yes. Okay, brilliant. I've not looked at this, but on this, this is my sort of go-to when I'm looking at these things because um, every – um library that you load comes with um some examples and uh, what the examples tend to do is they'll they'll tell you how it reads all of the different commands and then of course if you want to you can go into some of the documentation that supports it um so this this one i guess it, by looking at it is just literally reading every button on the xbox controller um, and then serial printing those values back so you can see what each of those do. Um, but what you can also do is control the LEDs that are on the Xbox controller as well. So this is where you're setting LEDs to certain uh, statuses, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and by looks of it, you can also get the battery level from the Xbox controller, which is quite handy. Um, yeah, I, I've seen that example. I just didn't know if, if there was a, a different one. For, like I said, I've, in, in playing various games, uh, sometimes you'll you'll you can double punch a button, and it'll do something versus single punching with that button. And yeah. I haven't been able Mike, to listen, Michael, I don't think I don't on... think you're sharing your. Michael, I'm not sure you're sharing the right window there at the minute. If you've opened the Xbox Rec V library up, we're not seeing. Oh, it. okay, just... yeah, got it, got it. Yeah, you're probably right. Oh, that's, that's the Xbox. There we go. So it's yeah. There we go. Ah, yeah, oh, there you it. go. Right. Yeah. So everyone can see now it yeah. how it's tracking through, looking for the different button. Uh, press possibilities so if you have a look through that library the xbox rec v you can open it up just in, in um, arduino um just yeah, simply by clicking on it like michael did and there you can see all of the, all of the different sort of uh, possibilities if you like okay now, now what, what you what you'd have to do with double clicks and things like that is you don't you have to do that in the code so you'd have to say you know it would get a little bit more complicated because you'd have to say that such a button's been pressed has it been pressed again in in point? In, yeah, in you need to start point? a timer. Yeah, you okay. can start a bit of a timer. But but most of the the more complex code, well, all of the all, like we did on the um, on the combinations, that's done within the software. So you'd have to do it through timers or through the software. But you've got no, there's no limit on what you can do. It's just dependent on how much time you want to spend learning. You know how to add all the extra bits and all the extra bits of code. But if you look gotcha. at you look at the Xbox controller when you look at the number of combinations that you have with the buttons Tons. back, there's loads and loads and loads of them. Um, and then, of course, you can press the, the little hats as well that you're using. So 
just using combos alone, that there's a hell of a lot of combinations that are not all tapped into. Certainly. Don't, and don't forget, you can also map certain key presses or key strokes to do sort of random events, if you like, within a set, you know, within a set number of um, uh, events. So, for example, uh, the the, pay, the cut and paste I did just before would have played a random sound between sounds five and seven, or you know, five and twenty, whatever it was. So, you 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 know, it, it's not just that you can only do one particular triggered event. Um, you know, if you wanted to sort of almost have potluck as to what it's going to do when you do a certain button press. So, like for example, um, on the the default for the B button on the uh, on the Padawan 360 is it'll trigger, it'll cycle, not cycle, it'll randomly go through sad sounds. So, you know, if you go, if you just keep pushing B, you're going to get you know potentially a different sound every time you push it, but it will be within the the bank of the sad sound, if you see what I mean. Yeah. And that's all. That's purely all down to the order in which the um, the files, the, the number files, I'm talking about, you know, obviously the sound stuff here, but it is, you know, it's still kind of relevant um, that you have to make sure that you kind of uh, package things up, if you like, into manageable sort of things. Uh, if, if I can sort of also just jump in with a couple of sort of cautionary words here, Michael, if that's okay. Yeah, um, and, and apologies if you have already covered this, but what, th there's a couple of things I really want to stress to people. One is that you don't introduce any delays in the running of the main code. OK, anything you do that slows down that loop or potentially stops that loop from running to wait for something else to happen is bad news. It's going to very, very uh, quickly cause your droid to potentially go out of control. Um, and I've seen this firsthand. I've experienced it firsthand due to a bug that was in the code uh, when I first started playing with it. Um, and yeah, it, it, it's not a good place to be in. So please, by all means, put something in there that triggers something else. You know, so you're going to go and trigger the, um, the the maestro board, and this is one of the reasons the maestro board is very, very powerful. It's because we're offloading that code or that sequence of events to another piece of kit. Um, you can do it with another Arduino. You can tell another Arduino to go and do a bunch of stuff, so long as you don't stop this Padawan main loop from running ever. Um, the other thing I wanted to also just just point out or mention is about sort of version control um, and just how much you start um, poking and prodding about in there. Now, this sort of stuff, obviously, with Michael's uh, group and his support network that he's got, and there's, you know, there's so many people here that Michael is now attracted to, to the, the whole, what started off as a 3D printing or 3D printed droid sort of club, if you like, or builders society. Not sure that's the right phrase exactly, <laughs> but um, but you know this is how we've all kind of got together. I I don't own a three D print. Yeah, you know, my droid isn't three D printed as it happens, but you know I, I really really like the stuff that Michael does, and obviously you know part. Of Have the you not got three D printed, Steve? I didn't know that. You're a you're a funny guy. No, I haven't got a three D printed droid. Oh, sorry, I thought you said 3D printer, I'm not saying. Oh, God, no, I've got a ton of them. Uh, well, no, I've, I've, got, I've got two or three. Um, but um, no, the, the point I was trying to get to was that the, the, the base code, if you like, which, which Dan has very kindly put together, is based on Shadow originally. Um, but what I, what I would just tell you to be cautious about is that if you're starting to make lots and lots of custom changes for your own droid, then that's great. But what you're potentially going to find is that you you're not really going to get support quite as much as you might have done um previously if you like and like i say with with michael's own support network that actually that problem kind of goes away anyway frankly so it's not as big a deal as it was before you know michael started getting hundreds and thousands of people in um, in his in his groups and it's fantastic for doing that but what i'm saying is if if dan for example uh, releases a new set of code because it introduces some new something new new widget that's come along or some new piece of t technology or it fixes something that we didn't you know a bug that we didn't know about then all of your hard work potentially would be lost if you wanted to take that new code or if you've made changes and suddenly stuff stops working then who are you going to ask for help and obviously the first thing would probably be to come to this group um, to ask for the help there but just just be mindful and keep control of your versions of stuff, okay? Pad um, 
Arduino is very, very good for being able to push something up to the Arduino and then finding it doesn't work and you've closed the window down and it automatically, so the, the, the thing, my personal bugbear with Arduino is that when you upload a piece of code, it seems to save that piece of code regardless of whether you asked it to save or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've had a number of times where I've pushed a piece of code up, it's broken whatever it was I was trying to do and I was like, oh crap what do i do now you know because i've just lost my original version because it's it's saved over it so just tread carefully don't run with scissors that is another one of those things you can change in the preferences so it doesn't auto save oh really well that's Under useful files, to know actually file preferences there's a checkbox for save when verifying or uploading oh thanks for that chris i wasn't yeah. at personally aware of that so yeah i'll definitely be looking it, it, it just annoyed the heck out of me too <laughs> Yeah. So well, just on a bigger, these. on a bigger safety net thing, can it? Can you have includes? Can you literally leave the code as is, but include from a separate file? So therefore, your stuff's in a separate file. It's where it is, and it just, it just includes that piece across. The, the, I think that's kind of what Michael's done, you know, ip, ipso facto, because of the whole fact of triggering the maestro to do something. But is yeah. that is that? Is that chunk of code not in the original version code? So it is in the original, yeah. There's, there's yeah, a couple can... of ways of doing it. You can start to structure the code more. So you, where we've got void loops and, and, and void uh, setups, you can, you can have small sub-programs that it will call. So it keeps your code a little bit neater. Um, and anybody who's a, who's a coder, you know, it becomes the, the, the larger the program, the more... What you have to do is to create individual subsets of programs that call off each other. Um, what we're doing at the moment is literally throwing everything into the main code. But things yeah. like things like GitHub is, is 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 probably where you know certainly with I should be going really with with some of the tweaks and things that I'm doing, uh, which I don't do. Uh, I've fallen foul to what Steve's done, um, where I've uploaded code for a do which I've been playing with. I've tweaked it, I've broke it, I've come out of it and not realised that I've actually oversaved or overwritten the, the OneDrive code, which means it's buggered it up for everybody else. So, um, you know, there's it, what, I, what I get into the habit of doing now, which is take, take the bad one, the first thing I do when I open it, if I'm going to edit it, is save it. You know, yes, saying, right, this, is, this is the new one. Save as. Yeah, save it first and then start to play around with it and, and, uh, and, and, and tweak it. Yeah. Um, but the, the important thing, as Steve said, is, is nothing that interrupts or slows it down. Uh, mm -hmm. I know Dan, Dan had a delay in his very, very early ones on the animation on the dome. And uh, you, 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 your R2 would be rolling along. And then when it turned, it turned the time it took while it turned its head, um, you had no control. And then it gives you control. Yeah, yeah. So, automate, yeah, the automate mode. The you automate you mode. certainly do um, include like, uh, subroutine files. Yeah. So you can actually put certain things into other files so that you're, you're just, you know, you can keep all your Meister in one file and just have it call that file. If you've ever played it around with Marlin for your 3D printer, you can see how many files that there, yeah. you, can, you can spread it out through. So that's actually a really good example of how to do it. Yeah, I was just thinking because my background is web design. So I'm thinking anytime you want to not mess with the core, you always right. throw it out to an include. So I'm assuming it probably exists. It, it does. I think most yeah. of the people in, in, this, in these sort of communities are people who kind of um, arm strong their way through it all. So, you know, start putting numbers in, see what happens and breaking it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got, you know, one of my best friends is a, is, is a quite a hardcore designer, you know, and he's, he bleeds from the eyes every time he looks at my code and goes, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> yeah. um, you know, well, so the thing is, if you've, if you've got that method of kind of picking your way through it, you as long as you can still lift all that out afterwards, pop it in its own file, yeah. and you've left it all clean, you've, you've got the best of both worlds, really. And using the modular approach is so much easier, I think, when you, when you get start yeah. to get your head around it. But again, yeah, I think people are using Arduinos for relatively small sets of code, which they can do. Whereas it gets yeah. a little bit more complex, you've got to get a bit smarter in the way you use it. So I, I've got another barrage of questions for you. Uh, the... Um, you talked about the transmit and receive. Where are you reading that data? Is that on a on a second Arduino, or what? What are you talking about? The uh, I'm I know I'm backing jumping back about a mile, but uh, yeah, that, that's the, that's the serial protocol, Eric. So 
It's um, you, you, you don't necessarily need to worry about it in the cold. All you've got to do is make sure that the serial interface is connected. And what, what it actually does is there's two wires. There's a receive and a transmit. So you receive right. and your Arduino connects to your transmit on your Maestro and your, and your um, transmit on your Maestro connects to your receive on your Arduino. And then other than that, the, the software library actually does all of the clever bits and bytes that go back. And you So you're not talking about transmitting uh, telemetry data. You're just talking about reading it back to the, the unit itself yeah. on, on two different boards. Okay. On two different boards, and it's, it's just a wired serial connection. Gotcha. And then my other question was, uh, how many people are running multiple Arduinos and Mar or possibly Arduino and Raspberry Pi, anyone? When you say multiple Arduinos, in what regard are you referring to? Someone, like, someone was mentioning running like one in the body and one in the head for different uh, configurations. I've, yeah. I've, I've done that. Yeah, I, I've got, I've got on, on Chopper, I've got, um, I've got one Arduino in the head, which is literally doing the, um, doing the lights so um this the little red light that you've kind of got on the on the side uh, there we go so that that's being run off the uh, off one arduino it's not connected to the other one it's just sat there um it's doing it doing a very stupid boring job which is moving the red light up and down that's all it's doing um and making sure that i've got blue lights at the front and then the second arduino is the main brain that's doing all of the, the controls but you can actually connect the two if you want to, you know, you can um, choose to have the two communicating if you want to get a little bit more advanced. Uh, and then people using the pies or anything like that. No, they're a little bit overkill. They're not ideally designed for doing input, output and hardware control. And they do use more power than the Arduino. The Arduino is perfectly crafted to do um, robotics and, and hardware control. So when you mentioned Dio, Dio's running on on an Arduino still. Dio's Dio's just got he's got a, a single Arduino Mega that runs the balancing. And what I've done is I've got really clean code. It's just it just literally runs around and does the main balance. Um, yeah, that is a beautiful project. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's um, but again, if if I if I put a lot of the stuff that I put on Chopper into there, it would affect the balance um, and. You know, the, the, there is a limitation on the Arduinos that they are single core processors, so they can't multitask, um, and they've not got a huge amount of processing power. So you do, if you want to do something that requires a lot of speed, like constantly updating, balancing off a, off a, off an IMU chip, then you do need to have, you know, really, really kind of clean code. Yeah, and th things like Raspberry Pis are, are better at sort of processing video, for example, and things like that. So you know, if you wanted it to, if you wanted it to display the animation for uh, the Death Star sort of bombing sequence or something on the little screen, then you wouldn't have an Arduino trying to actually produce that. You'd again be using the Arduino to trigger that animation on something else. Excellent. Yeah. I did notice that Tross and uh, Robotics has a servo test that they're doing right now with. Uh, the new Arduino that runs a camera and has Wi-Fi output. So if that's something you guys are looking to play with later, that's out there. It's new toys out there on the market already. Always new kids on the block. Yep. Yeah, I, I got I got a chance to go over to Italy to meet the, uh, the technical director for Arduino to look at their their roadmap, and they're looking at doing a lot of a lot of cloud stuff. So a lot of big data and cloud stuff, where you know they're using the small processors at front end. And then throwing over Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or 4G um, to start to get to do some really clever stuff. So I think they've got they've got some quite interesting plans ahead. That's how uh, Vector and uh, Cosmo are through yeah. Anki and now Digital Dream Labs. They upload uploaded all the heavy lifting to a tablet or a PC or a phone or something. And yeah, yeah that's it. AI, and we can all retire. <laughs> exactly exactly cool okay well hopefully that was useful um i said what, what what we'll do next time is um we'll get more into the nuts and bolts of connecting the arduino to the maestro so literally loading scripts on the maestro getting them up there connecting the serial connections from the 
um, Arduino to the Maestro and then triggering those scripts and we'll have a look at that through. So a bit more a more practical. This one was just a step through on the on the Padwan code. Um, then once we've once we've got that, we can then pull all that together really with um, with some animations on the you know on the droids and, and, and play it with it without in real action. And then the final session is just a bit fault finding and just see what's going on. Okay. Cool. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, folks. Thank yeah, you very final much. session show and tell. Show and tell for the final session. So uh, you know, <laughs> you all need to bring in your homework. Show it to the rest of the class. <laughs> what yeah. if we haven't bought it yet? Yeah. <laughs> Flash, <laughs> flashbacks for everyone who was at school. Research, so. so that actually gets me to a good question because I've got the maestro and I'm buying the stuff to get the Padawan system going, but I don't have everything bought yet. Like I've just got an MP3 trigger, got the maestro and that kind of stuff. Can you run the Padawan code without all of the stuff there, just trying to trigger some of the parts of it? Or the, the important thing is your transmitter and your receiver and the USB shield. So, uh, you know, you you could you could potentially, but you'd have to rewrite the code to sort of listen for a, for a particular pin being pulled low, and then use a jumper cable to pull that pin low, for example, which is okay. probably more hassle than it's worth. So, if you've got the stuff coming, yeah, the USB receiver shield um, and the receiver puck itself. And obviously a transmitter, uh, the Arduino that those plug into. And that's basically it. You don't really need a lot else. You don't need the speed controllers or anything like that. Certainly, um, the, the MP3 trigger is useful because then you can kind of confirm that you've actually done something. Um, you know, but then again, well, there's other ways of doing that. Well, yeah. I've been gradually working my way through as, as stuff has become electrically connected because I'm I'm terrible with that stuff. I've gradually been oh try it. Okay, that works. Okay. I've got the little green light so that the, the on the, the spark fun so that I know that the trigger is sending something. It's not coming out any sound, so there's a but there's a problem downstream. But I it says it's trying to do it. I'm good there. <laughs> Plug a set of headphones into it. I think that's what uh, that's the simplest solution. Don't have to worry well, about it. Actually, I found an old set of uh, computer speakers I plugged in, so I, it, oh, that is working. It's it's the uh, it's going from my speak the speaker that I'm putting in the droid amplifier an amplifier that needs to go through into into that jack yeah, and, yeah. Uh, also also consider a ground loop isolator just as a little reference for you there oh yeah okay. yeah I've so got a bag you get in servos there. in there <laughs> yep anything yeah. that's going to cause electrical noise and a droid is a very good source of electrical noise uh, with all the mo DC motors and stuff like that, then a ground right. loop isolator will save you a lot of head scratching. They're not expensive. They're, you know, get a decent one. That's what I would say. I, I always use the AV Link brand because um, they are exceptionally good quality. Um, they're about uh, 10 bucks, I guess, or something like that. So they're still not expensive in the grand scheme of things, but you get beautifully clean audio through them. Okay. I think that's the advantage. Can I say again, Paul? I think the loops, the ground loops I just picked up were about six pound each. I, so, I did, we, we yeah. did have an issue, funny enough, at um, the first R2 Builders event. Yeah, the first R2 Builders event I went to, uh, one of my friends from the Builders Club, um, he said, I keep getting this hiss on my audio. Uh, and he just couldn't figure it out. He said, I've got a ground loop isolator. And I had a look at it. It was one of these cheap oblong sort of ones. And I went, well, that'll be your problem right there. It's a piece of crap, um, you know spend the money get the good stuff um doesn't mean to say you have to spend a ridiculous amount of money but get go for a reputable sort of brand don't get a some cheapy crappy chinese version and no offense to cheapy crappy chinese kit because i survive on that stuff <laughs> and i've also got to take uh, the signal off of so i'm only using one one speaker i've got to take uh, the signal off of the other line to try to drive whatever the um the 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 lighting for the mouth yeah, whatever, yeah. I, whatever I run that through. Um, That's clever. So you're drive. using you're using the audio to drive the lights. Yes. Yeah. On on on, on just the mouth thing. I, I did that on uh, on my very my very first build BB8. Um, I stuck a Bluetooth speaker in there, but there's uh, the little light at the side of BB8. I wanted to flash. This was this was this was the very first 3D printing project where I designed started designing. Um, and I found a, a microphone that you can get that just plugs into the Arduino so you can read sound levels and then 
I literally mapped that to an LED. So then when it when it when the noise came out of the microphone, it was near enough to the microphone he could hear it, and the the lights would flash in in time with the the speech. It worked quite well. The only drawback was if you're in a room with kids or anything that's a bit noisy, it, it would still pick up a little it's bit. Tricky all the time. Yeah. But you've got a you, you had a little pot on this thing that you could turn it up or down. So um, yeah, it worked really well. I've done something similar with an amplifier that happened to have like almost like a little mini meter on it. Uh, and all I did is I basically cut the connections for that and then lengthened them and um, I actually run a Dalek off those. So the Dalek lights in it, in its sort of ears, if you like, light up in time with the with whatever audio is being played that way. I think that's the advantage in these sort of sessions because um, to build a pad one three sixty from scratch when you've got no idea about electronics and this was pretty much what I did is quite scary because you got all these components, you put all these wires together. It's a big complex circuit and you load the code and then it doesn't work. And then actually trying to uh, fault find is a nightmare because you know it, the whole thing is hanging by a thread and if you press the wrong button it's going to burst into flames. Is is how you think. <laughs> I'm going to do a Rick. I th I do a Rick, I think it's called, Michael. Yeah, do a Rick. But, but but I think once you start to understand the individual components, it makes it a lot easier. What what we'll do, I think, when we go through it next time, um, is I wouldn't mind actually putting just the Bluetooth shield on and the Xbox receiver, and we'll use that base Xbox code to tri trigger some maestros. So we can we can almost run like you said, Anne, without the um, without the saber tooth, without the siren, without any of the motor controllers. But rather than try and strip back a pad one, let's let's build one up from really from just the, those basic components. Because um, I think then it'll it it'll give us something to play with. Here's one I prepared earlier. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, you need to put that in the post. Yeah, <laughs> all good to go. Yeah, I recognise that loop. Yeah, that's the AV link. Yeah. I always, I always use those. Yeah, that's the ones I just got. But yeah, just good yeah, stuff. Just handful of servos, maestro there, some wires and things. And, uh, yeah, you just make it look so good. simple. I know. I hate that. <laughs> it's just there. It is simple. There. I've got Haribo <laughs> laying around from the kids. That's it. <laughs> that's not helping me. <laughs> hey, Haribo's good. We like Haribo. They've eaten them all. <laughs> That's damn the uh, right folks well um, brilliant thanks again for tuning in and stuff and um, look thanks for putting it on see you all at the next session lovely yeah, thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Well, it was yeah. wonderful thank you so much Michael thank you cheers bye, bye.